Sabbath peace. It's another opportunity Sabbath for us peace. to come together and hear and learn of the word of truth that's given to us by the Most High God. All honor goes to the Father through the Son, whose name is Yahushua. In him lies the only hope for salvation. We know that it is obtained by grace through faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast, and given freely as a gift to all who obey him. We understand that if you do not obey him, it is made obvious or made uh, manifest that we do not believe. In this state, we should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, anything that we do give, whether it be a gift of tongues, a gift of prophecy, or any supernatural experience that we may have, it can and it will be used against us in the day of judgment. With that said, peace to the saints that are in the room, to the saints that couldn't make it, to the ones watching in on the camera, but no peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is repent that they might live. Let's open up to John chapter uh, 7. Let's do John chapter 7 verse 14. John chapter 7 verse 14. No, my bad. Ouch. I appreciate it. That's all I got. Everything he do for us is all about positioning. Just putting us in a a certain position and sometimes you know that thing can be uncomfortable and sometimes that thing can be glorious man it feel good for it you can be riding high but the whole thing is just being consistent no matter what it is whether it's high or whether it's low you keep you keep steadfast in the word and you keep keep obeying the man that's what he's looking for he just wants somebody to no matter how it look you know what I'm saying you'll keep going and do what do what you need to do they taught us that in church Right. They, taught, they taught us that much in church. They, they may not apply the right context to it, but the core of it was true. Right? You know what I'm saying? They used to tell me in uh, my church, they used to tell me, no matter what it looked like. You know what I'm saying? They used to tell me, no matter what it looked like. And, and in their mind, what they were saying, just don't stop, quote unquote, believing God. You know what I'm saying? No matter what happened, don't stop believing them. But we have to take that same principle and apply it to the, the Bible. And what he's saying is, don't stop obeying. Right, because that's how we—that's how we define our belief. Right? For us, belief is not just you know what I'm saying. In my mind, I say God is real. You know what I'm saying. Belief for us has to be in my mind. I know this word is real. If this word is real, I know if I don't obey it, I'm going to hell. Right, and if I do obey it, that means I'm getting going into the kingdom, and that's how I love him. So I can't say I love the man and then I disobey. It, right, if we—if I believe the word. So if we—if we don't—if we do believe God and we do believe the word. Then no matter what, we just have to stay steadfast, steadfast on it. It's just important for us. Um, and just knowing that the, in the end, man, God, you know what I mean? Like in the end, he'll turn that, he'll turn all that stuff around. Where's John chapter 7, verse 14? I think 14, what I want. Now, about the midst of the feast, Yahushua went up into the temple and taught. He said, in the midst of the feast. You know what I'm saying? In the middle of the feast, he went into the temple and then he started teaching. And the Jews marveled, saying, How knoweth this man letters, having never learned? You know what I'm saying? Looking at him like, he never he'd never been to seminary. Alright? He'd never been to a, a Bible class. Alright? He, he, who was his who was he ordained by? Right? All that stuff that they try to tell us. Right? They, who who was he ordained? Who was his spiritual head? Alright, all this different stuff. They're looking at him like, how is this man teaching? He never learned. Let's hear about it. Yahshua answered them and said, My doctrine is not mine, but his that sent me. He said, my doctrine is not mine, but guess whose it is? The one who sent me, right? He said, it's not my doctrine, it's the one who sent me. Then what? If any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine, whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself. Right? He said, if you do the man's will. He said, first of all, it's not my doctrine, it's the one that sent me. And if you do his will, then you will know if whether I'm teaching a lie or whether I'm teaching the truth. Whether it's just coming from me or whether it's coming from him. Right? Everything that we do 
It's all connected to obedience. That's the missing link. All right, this is the missing link that we haven't been able to get, that people haven't been stressing to us. Even our Hebrew brother, right? They don't even stress it. They, you know what I'm saying? They kind of take the same Christian route where nobody can keep all. It's just the law for them. Nobody can keep all the laws, right? You just try your hardest to keep the law, and that's what God wants. And he'll turn back our captive. The whole thing for them is turning back our captivity, <laughs> right? All they're all they looking for is all flesh, right? They're just looking for us to get out of America. They don't realize that that's not kept connected to, to, to anything but our salvation. Right? That's all it's connected to. Our salvation is connected to us getting out of America. We're getting out of America because we're going back to the kingdom. And you think you're going to walk just walk into the kingdom and you're not obeying? That's crazy. You even lost your darn mind. You can obey as much law as you want to. And I appreciate you obeying it. You don't obey the son, your butt done. Book tell you. What is that? Psalm 2? Psalm 1? Kiss the son. I think he said kiss the son. Psalm 2. Psalm 2? I think it's 2. He said kiss the son. You know what I'm saying? What's wrong with you? You think you don't get in without the son? You lost your darn mind. This, uh, we were leave all last week. Last week, so last week we left off and we saw uh, Moses was about to send a few people up to go scope out the land. He wanted them to check out the land and look at it. So we're going to go back. It's Numbers chapter 13. All right? So we read last week how he was about to send the people up and they're going to scope that thing out and just kind of figure out what's going on, what are we up against. Because remember, the Most High God, he took us out of Egypt, brought us into the wilderness. After we got into the wilderness, we were kind of, you know what I'm saying, uh, waiting for Moses to tell us what God is saying. And he spoke to us from the mouth and Moses went up then he came back. And then we built our tabernacle. We set up our priests. So we went through all these different things over a matter of a year, about a little over a year. And now we on the move again. So then we started to be on the move again. And now we were, we were going right into the land. We were about to go right into Canaan, right, which would later be called Israel. Right? So we was about to go right into the land. And then Moses was like, let's just send some spies up there. Right? Let's just scope this thing out. Let's figure out what we're dealing with, figure out what's the best way to get in there, figure out what we got to do. Most of God already told us it's our land. You know what I'm saying? That he's going to give it to us. That was his promise to us. But Moses was like, you know what I'm saying? Let's send some people out there. Let's figure out what we're dealing with. You know what I'm saying? So this, this is what we're going to pick up. It's Numbers chapter 13, verse 1. It's Numbers chapter 13, verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Send thou men that they may search the land of Canaan, which I give unto the children of Israel. Of every tribe of their fathers shall ye send a man, every one a ruler among them. All right, so he said, of every tribe of your fathers, send a man. You know what I'm saying? The rulers among them. So the rulers of that tribe, the heads of the tribe. Keep going. And Moses, by the commandment of the Lord, sent them from the wilderness of Paran. All those men were heads of the children of Israel. Uh-huh. And these were their names. Of the tribe of Reuben. Sh Reuben Shemua, the son of Zachar. All right, so he sent, notice that he's sending, he's, he, they're about to list off all the names. Notice that he's sending the heads of the tribes. What do you think he's sending them for? To represent the tribes, to check out the land. To check out the land? What they checking out the land for? To go bring them cookies? <laughs> Make sure it's good. Bring them some pie, you know what I'm saying? Like, hey, we're your new neighbors. Take it over. They looking for war. They looking to scope that thing out. They trying to, this strategy, right? Which way we going to come in? What wall we going to take over first? What's the weakest city they got, right? They spying out the land to figure out how we going to take this thing, right? This is war. Grab, uh, grab, uh, grab, uh, numbers one. Because we have, we really didn't read number one. But number one kind of set up the whole scope of what we're doing. Notice, Most High God brought us out of Egypt, right? Built our tabernacle. And after that, we have a book called Numbers. They call it Numbers because we start counting a lot of stuff. Watch what we did. This is Numbers chapter 1. Give me verse uh, 44. Skip on down to 44. We ain't got to read it all. It's Numbers chapter 1, verse 44. Watch what the book says. These are those that were numbered, which Moses and Aaron numbered, and the princes of Israel being 12 men. Uh huh. Each one was for the house of his fathers. All right, so princes, what is prince? What's another word when it say princes? A son of a king? Rulers. Rulers. So just like what it said over in, uh, in uh, Numbers uh, 13. All right, the rulers of the tribe. 
He said, these are the 12 rulers of the tribe, 12 princes of the tribe. Watch this. So were all those that were numbered of the children of Israel by the house of their fathers from 20 years old and upward. So 20 years old and upward. I wonder why they need to, you. Why you got to be 20 to be numbered? Let's see. All that were able to go forth to war in Israel. Everybody who was there, whoever was ready for the scraps. Because <laughs> the whole thing was set up preparing us to go to war. So he is like, most high God looking like, don't even count the kids. Don't even count these babies. It don't make no sense to count these babies. Count the men who going to get out there and get it. Right? Count me every man that's 20 and up. Right? He 20. He above 20. Let's get him. Let's go. So then we start counting because we now, why would you count your, your warriors? You want to know. Well, this is what I'm dealing with. Right? This is how many people I'm dealing with. It's how many people. Now you can strategize. Okay, I got 20. You know what I'm saying? I got, you know what I'm saying? A couple stocky men. You know what I'm saying? I got a couple fast. You know what I'm saying? Slim guys. You know what I'm saying? So now I can, okay, I'm going to put y'all together. I'm going to put, who can fight? Okay, you can fight. You good at that. Okay. So now I can start strategizing with all the stuff. They numbering everybody to get, in a, get an account. After they get a count, then they section them out. This is the tribe of, uh, this is the tribe of uh, Dan. This is the tribe of Judah. This is the tribe of Reuben. Right? And put all these different tribes together. Right? Keep going. Watch this. Even all they that were numbered were 600,000, 3,550. Mm -hmm. But the Levites after the tribe of their fathers were not numbered among them. Who wasn't? Why wasn't the Levites numbered? For the Lord had spoken unto Moses, saying, Only thou shalt not number the tribe of Levi, neither take the sum of them among the children of Israel. But thou shalt appoint the Levites over the tabernacle of testimony, and over all the vessels thereof, and over all things that belong to it. They shall bear the tabernacle and all the vessels thereof, and they shall minister unto it, and shall encamp round about the tabernacle. Mm -hmm. And when the tabernacle sets forward, the Levites shall take it down. Mm -hmm. And when the tabernacle is to be pitched, the Levites shall set it up. Levites shall set it, set it up. All right, so he's letting them know, all these other boys, they going to war. Guess who's not going to war? Levites. Mm -hmm. So guess what I don't want you to do? Don't count them. Well, I'm going to count the Levites. I'm going to throw my number off. When it's time to go to war, I'm going to feel like I got a lot more people. Levites was extra about 200,000 people, right? So they don't feel like I got an extra 200,000 people, and really I don't. He's like, man, I got like 600,000 of these boys, right? So it don't make no sense for me to start counting the Levites and add them on to that number when I know they're not going to fight, right? So you got to back off. So he's trying to section it off. Lead the Levites out. We know they're not fighting, right? Give me everybody who is going to fight. The whole thing that we was trying to do was scope out. We was trying to scope out the land because we was about to fight these people. Right? We were ready to get it in. Most High God set us up and he told us that he's a man of war. As soon as we left out of Egypt, what did he say call himself? A man of war. This is uh, Exodus 17. Watch this. Alright, it wasn't our first rodeo. This is Exodus chapter 17. Give me verse 8. Uh, baby. Then came Amalek and fought with Israel in Rephidim. And Moses said unto Joshua, Choose us out men and go out. Fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of God in my hand. Uh-huh. So Joshua did as Moses had said to him and fought with Amalek. And Moses, Aaron, and Ur went up to the top of the hill. All right, so this is before. This is before we even went up to the mountain and had Most High God speak to us out of the mountain. Right? We were just moseying along. Amalek came and get us. So once Amalek came and they tried to battle with us, Joshua, the son of Nun, he went out to go fight against them. And Moses said, you go ahead and go fight against them. I'm going to take this rod in my hand, this staff. Right? I'm going to take this staff in my hand. And I'm going to hold it up. Watch this. And it came to pass when Moses held up his hand that Israel prevailed. And when he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. Right? So as long as Moses had his hand up with that stuff, we prevailed. We won the war. We were fighting because of God. Right? God said, okay, Moses, if you're strong enough to hold that up, I'm strong enough to let these people win. We'll prevail. Right? You just got to stick it through. 
right? Moses sitting there, you know what I'm saying? He's sticking through, but it's a war. So we win in the war, but a war is not over like that. I mean, a fight, you know what I'm saying? Fight, it be feeling like when you're in a fight, it feels like that thing lasts about 30 minutes. But really, you know what I'm saying? You, you know what I'm saying? You, you think about that thing, it's like, you know what I'm saying? Talk to your friends, like, no, nah, you was only fight for about 10 seconds, bro. You know what I'm saying? That thing was over. You know what I'm saying? It feels longer. That's not a war, though. You remember, a war is a bunch of little fights. You know what I'm saying? So now they going to old, they going to old, you going to old. And so that thing just keep going and going. Remember, you got 600,000 people now that's fighting. Right? So it's a whole lot of people that got to get it out the way first. With weapons involved and people hiding out and this strategy and all this stuff. So this thing taking time. So Moses sitting there holding up his arms. But what's going to happen to Moses' arms after a while? You get tired. Let's hear about it. But Moses' hands were heavy, and they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat there on. So they tried to get him, right? They're like, we know that as long as Moses' hands up, we can succeed out here. Right? So they're like, all right, Moses, have a seat. They got a stone, they rolled it out under. They're like, go ahead and have a seat, Moses. Right? Watch this. And Aaron and Ur stayed up his hands, and the one on one side and the other on the other side. Right? So then Aaron, right, because they looking, they looking like, I know as long as Moses' hands up, we win. Right? I want my people to win. As long as Moses hands up, we win. So they like, look, take a, take a seat. Right? He took a seat. They had like, look, let's do something else. I tell you what. I'm going to stand on this side and hold his hand up. you going to stand. Because Moses been holding his hand up all, all day. He getting tired. You know what I'm saying? That's an old man. He getting tired. So they like, okay, you know what? I'm going to hold up this side. And you hold up the other side. They hold his hands up to make sure that they prevail. Right? So Moses like this, with a rod in his hand. You know what I'm saying? One person on one side, one person on the other side. Just like y'all were sure. Right? Because we knew as long as he is on that cross, we prevail. prevail. Right? As long as his hand was on that cross, we prevail. Right? And guess what y'all were sure had? Grab a, uh, what I want? Give me Mark. First, I want John, though. Give me John 19, then we're going to go to Mark. And before you turn, finish out that sentence, or finish out that verse. And Aaron and Ur stayed up his hands, and the one on one side and the other on the other side, and his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. Until when? The going down of the sun. Okay, I just wanted to make sure we got that part. Until the going down of the sun. This is John chapter 19. After that, we're going to Mark 15. John 19 and Mark 15. And John 19, give me verse 16. Watch this. This is John chapter 19. Give me verse 16. Then delivered he him, therefore, unto, the, unto be crucified, and they took Yahushua and led him away. All right, he said, then delivered he them, or him, to be crucified, and they took Yahushua, and they did what? Led him away. And they led him away. What else? And he, bearing his cross, went forth into a place called the place of a skull. Which he was bearing what now? Called the place of a skull. He was bearing what? His cross. All right, he had to carry, just like Moses had to carry the staff. He had to hold that staff up. Y'all sure had to carry the cross. They took him to a, a, a town called what? A place called the place of a skull, which is called in Hebrew Golgotha. All right? Keep going. Where they crucified him and two other with him on either side. They crucified him and he had how many? On either side. One and y'all sure in the midst. He had one person on each side of him, just like Moses. Moses was holding up the rod. And they told you Aaron and then Herb was on the other side. And they was holding him up. They said one on each side. Same thing with Yahweh Shua. Yahweh Shua had one man on each side of him. Right? We look at this stuff and we feel like, that was disgusting. We look at this stuff and we feel like all this stuff is just an accident. Like stuff just happened. As Christians, we read this and all we know is, you know what? It was two thieves on the cross. And one of them believed and went to paradise and the other one didn't. We ain't never looked at this and said, oh, that was Moses. Y'all sure had to testify. He, I mean, Moses had to testify y'all was sure. Right? He had to try to copy what Moses did. He had to. 
Grab Mark for me. This is Mark chapter uh, 15. Mark chapter 15, give me verse 30. It's the book here, son. You hear me? It's the book. All right. It's Mark chapter 15, verse 30. to see ourselves in the book. You know what I'm saying? Every one of us in, in, in different times of our life, we probably text somebody and ask them, you know, give me a verse that, you know, can kind of speak to my situation. You know what I'm saying? I'm sad. Can you give me something to kind of cheer me up or this, that, and other? Because the whole time, we've been kind of taught to look at ourselves in the book. You know what I'm saying? We look for ourselves. Give me something that speak to me. Give me a verse for today. You know what I'm saying? But what we what, what we need to learn is how, how do we see y'all with in the book? Right, because once you see him and once you understand the man, it help you, it help you understand his how he felt. Right, and once you understand how he felt, then it make what we go through a little more small. Right, when you can look at the man, he died for all our sins, and he he said this last last prayer to the Most High God, and he said, "Man, just take this cup from me." He just asked him, "Can you can you take this cup from me?" Right, just let it pass. And he said, "I know it got, I know how this thing got to play out." But I'm still going to ask. A lot of times we feel that way. Feeling like, man, this prayer is pointless. But you know what? We still got to ask. You know what I'm saying? We still got to ask. Got a lot of stuff we got to cry out for. A lot of, you know, don't let this stuff get to you where you get to the point where you can't. You, you know what I'm saying? You don't even want to pray. You know what I'm saying? You don't even want to talk to the most high God because you feel like, oh, it's just, you know what I'm saying? That thing don't even matter no more. I already know what's going to happen. I already know it don't make sense to play for pray for black people in America. You know why? Because I know this is what the book already said. That don't make no sense. Most High God Himself told Moses, "Oh, I'm about to kill all of them." When in the world did you know? Did you see Moses say, "Oh, God just said He's gonna kill y'all. I ain't even about to pray for y'all." As soon as God said He's gonna kill them, that's when you start darn praying. Most High God told David, right? He told David, "I'm gonna kill your son." Guess what David started doing? He just walked away and said, no, nah, don't nobody worry about it. God already said it's going to happen. It was already prophesied. No. He got his butt down and started fasting and praying. Right? We got to get out of the mindset and start thinking that we, we up there thinking like God. Think like us. Be vulnerable to God. If we can't be vulnerable to nobody else, be vulnerable to God. Right? Cry out to the man. Samuel said, far be it from me if I sin against you by not praying for you. That's it. <laughs> Our prayer has to be constant to the man. We can't, you know what I'm saying? We can't do that. Y'all, if y'all with Shua can pray and he know the plan. He know exactly how he got to pray out. And he, gonna, and he gonna turn around and pray, can you pass this cup for me? In other words, can I not be crucified tomorrow? You know what I'm saying? Is it, is it any other way we can get the thing done? And he, let me tell you, Yahushua knows for a fact that's the only way this thing got to play out. And the man say, is there any other way that thing? I mean, if it be any other way this thing can play out, you know what I'm saying? Just give me the sign now. We can, you know what I'm saying? I, I, I will, let's do it. Most of God was like, nah. Right? And Yahushua already knew what the answer was going to be. Didn't stop that prayer though. Right? That has to be the difference with us. That has to be the difference. Don't be trying to outthink God. Just respond to him. Be vulnerable to him. Pray how you feel. If you mad at somebody, pray. I'm mad. Get they but God. We look through Psalms. That was the prayer. A lot of people try to act like Psalms is just, oh, Psalms is just a beautiful book. And this is, oh, cut that out. Whole time you read Psalms, it's talking about cursing people. You know what I'm saying? Getting they butt. God condemn these folks. It's okay to pray to God with that stuff if that's in your heart. Because I can guarantee you one thing, you ain't fooling God. You ain't fooling God. Oh, God, I just want to pray for my enemies that they they do well. If that's in your heart, that's good that you pray that way. But a lot of them, man, that stuff ain't in our heart yet. And you know what? God can't help us then because now he looking at us and like, you can't even be honest with me or yourself. So now I'm supposed to fix you. Book tell us 
if you say you ain't sick, you don't need a physician. Tell them. Man, that's how, I, that's how I feel in my heart right now. Honestly, I don't want to knock him out. Man just ran to me in the back of my car. I got out the car calm. You know what I'm saying? Oh, no, it's okay. Let me tell you how I really felt, though. I wanted to take something to a darn head. You ran into my car with my kids and my wife in the car. Ah, oh, it ain't that bad. No, don't worry about it. Just give me your shit. Don't worry about it. Because that's how I got to be to him. Guess how I talk to God, though. Man ran into my darn car. I, listen, you know what I want to do. That's how I talk to the man. In the shower every darn morning. If I got something that's on my heart, we got to talk to the man that way. I guarantee you one thing, he'll correct me. He'll put something on my brain and be like, oh, yeah, okay, you know. You know how that thing. And I already know how it go. I already knew what had to happen. I knew the most I got going to have to deal with me. We good. I know it's coming. But I ain't about to sit here in front like that's not how I feel to you. I'm a front to everybody else. Everybody else, I got a job. Most of God say, I can't sin against y'all. Period. So when it comes to y'all, I'll be like, oh, well, that's how I go. When it comes to God, let me tell you how I really felt. He know. That's how he changes us from the inside. Because we can be vulnerable to the man. A lot of us, we've made ourselves impenetrable. You know what I'm saying? We think we're doing something. Right? But God can't even get to us. We look here, sitting here like, uh, like uh, the Pharaoh. And what the Pharaoh do? He repent after every play that came back. If things got rough, he repent. Oh, okay, Moses. I'll let the people go. Then come back, do the same thing again. Nah, 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 they can't go. That's what we do when we get caught up in these same cycles. Same cycles, same cycles. And it all comes down to how we praying, how we acting with the Most High God, and then plain old obedience and consistency. Right? Just got to keep it going. That's the only way this thing works. That's the only way it works. Otherwise, it's just, I mean, it's just a wash. You know what I'm saying? I think start on one end and end on the other. You know what I'm saying? I think it's just a wash. Watch this in Mark. You know what I'm saying? This is Mark chapter 15, verse 30. Watch what the book says. Save thyself and come down from the cross. Mm -hmm. Likewise, also the chief priest mocking said among themselves with the scribes, he saved others, himself he cannot save. Mm-hmm. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, descend now from the cross that we may see and believe. Mm -hmm. And they that were crucified with him reviled you know him. Saying? You got the son of the most high God sitting there and you got these people running their darn mouth. Imagine the darn disrespect. I'll come off the cross, slap you in your darn mouth. Right? Be the most high God. Keep going. And when the sixth hour was come, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. what? Darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. All right, let's go back. This is, this is Exodus chapter 17. Exodus chapter 17, verse 12. It's Exodus chapter 17, verse 12. It's a darkness came over the sky. Exodus chapter 17, verse 12. Watch this. Most high God was sitting there, you know what I'm saying, watching his son be crucified. He had two people, one on each side of him. You know what I'm saying? He had to bear his cross, and he's sitting there with his hands up, just like this. Most high God looking at it the whole time. Like, yep, I remember when Moses was just like that. Because Moses was sitting on a rock. He had Aaron on one side, he had her on the other side. He was holding up a staff. As long as his hand was up, we won the fight. Let's see how long he had his hands up. But Moses' hands were heavy, and they took a stone and put it under him, mm -hmm. and he sat thereon. And Aaron and Ur stayed up, stayed up his hands, the one on the side, uh, the one on the one side, and the other on the other side. And his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. Till that thing got dark. Y'all shoe was up there until it got dark too. All right. Whole time we look at this stuff, it got to testify of the sun. All right. We got to be able to see it. We got to be able to testify of the sun when we see it. And not see ourselves in this book, be able to see the truth. Once we see the truth, that thing liberate us. All right, it sets us free. Because we can see what he went through and we can say, okay, he remained consistent. All right, the whole book remains consistent. No matter who it is, it remains consistent. You see, you see everybody's life that we look at in this book, no matter what, testify to y'all, the, the, the Most High God 
and his son Yahushua. So now how is our life supposed to testify? We just got to get it together. We supposed to testify to man too. Keep going. Exodus 17, verse 13. Oh, yeah. I lost it real quick. It's Exodus 17, verse 13. And Joshua discomfited Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. When they say discomfited, it means that he, he beat him up. Right? He took him down. He was successful in the war. Right? So Joshua went up against the men, and he discomfited him. So you see, Joshua has first-hand knowledge. Oh, this thing can work out. But Joshua was leading the army. Moses put his hands up. All of a sudden, we win it. Moses' hand dropped. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Now we're backing off. So he see how this thing works, right? He's seeing, man, God is real. With God on our side, we can beat anybody. Right? Keep going. And the Lord said unto Moses, write this for a memorial in a book. All right? He told Moses, he said, write this thing down. That's how we end up reading it now. He said, write this thing down for a memorial in a book. Keep going. And rehearse it in the ears of Joshua. Uh-huh. For I will utterly put out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. So notice what happened. He told him to write it down in the book, and he said, rehearse it. In other words, repeat it. Keep teaching it to, to Joshua. Remember last week, we said it's safe for us to keep repeating the same things. Right? For us to keep doing the same thing and keep repeating, he said, that's safe. That's why he's telling him. He's like, write this thing down in the book, right? Y'all just kicked Amalek butt. As long as Moses had his hands up, y'all kicked his butt. But write it down in the book. And after you write it down, guess who you need to rehearse it to? Joshua. Keep that in mind because Joshua going to play a good big, big part when, before we get out of here today. All right? So he said, write it in the book, rehearse it in front of Joshua. What else? For I will utterly put out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. He said, I will utterly get him out. So why did the Most High God didn't like Amalek too much? Go ahead, grab uh, Deuteronomy 25. Let's get some backstory. It's Deuteronomy chapter 25. All right? We are people at war. We came out of Egypt. We are ready for war, though. You know what I'm saying? We weren't just sitting down, you know what I'm saying, playing around. Most High God had us ready to fight. What? It's Deuteronomy chapter 25. I think I'm on verse 17 or something like that. Deuteronomy 25 what? 25, 17. Remember what Amalek did unto thee by the way when ye were come forth out of Egypt. Right? So he now he he tell he's like remember what Amalek did in the way when you were come forth when y'all came out of Egypt don't you forget what Amalek did to y'all what he do how he met thee by the way and smote the hindermost of thee even all that were feeble behind thee when thou was faint and weary and he feared not God right he said we were tired and then Amalek he came behind us and he smoked the feeble behind us the weak people our women our children right. He said, don't you forget that. Where we get got that from? From putting the weak people in the back. Uh, Jacob. Jacob, right? Remember Jacob, when Esau was coming, right? Jacob, he said, let me split up my people. Then after he split up the people, he said, I'm going to put my wives, my children, all that in the back. All right? So that's where we got it from. That's where we started to line up our people. Then Amalek came behind us and attacked us from the rear. Right? Most high God didn't like that thing or not a lot. Watch this. Therefore it shall be when the Lord thy God has given thee rest from all thine enemies round about in the land which the Lord thy God gives thee for an inheritance to possess it, that thou shalt blot out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. Thou shalt not forget it. Grab, uh, let's go back to Numbers 13. So you can see the war was on. All right, this is what we did. Wasn't foreign for us to get into a little tussle. So when it came time to Moses, 
to send over 12 rulers of the tribes to go figure out what are we getting ourselves into, what's our strategy. That's what we're doing. We already had the number of the people. We already had a little bit of war experience. And we had a man like Joshua who's seen firsthand that the Most High God is on our side. Long Moses got his hands up. We had win this thing. So you can imagine. And remember, Moses Moses had to write that thing down. And he had to do what to Joshua? He recited to him. He had to rehearse that thing to Joshua. That means he had to tell Joshua all the time. This is how I go, Joshua. This Remember, this is what happened, Joshua. So what do you think that's going to do to Joshua, Joshua confidence? Build him up. Joshua going to be like, man, what you talking about? You know what I'm saying? Most I got on our side. Who you want? Now I remember when I remember when Moses had his hands up and we could win anybody, right? Most high, his confidence in the Most High God is high at that point. So when he sent twelve people out there. Let's see, see what the twelve people. Let's see what happened. This is uh, Numbers chapter thirteen, verse. Let's skip down to verse sixteen. This is Numbers chapter thirteen, verse sixteen. These are the names of the men which Moses sent to spy out the land. Uh-huh. And Moses called O'Shea, the son of Nun. O'Shea, the son of Nun? What's his name? Jehoshua. Yahushua. Guess what? That's Joshua. Same person. Right? That's where that's what that's how you spell out Yahushua's name when they when they modify it in English. You'll see you ever heard somebody call, you know what I'm saying, the most high God Jehovah. So you have that same prefix, Jeho, right? J E H O, right? Jehoshua and Jehovah, right? The reason why it does that is because the J actually makes the Y sound, and then the these foolish people, these Jewish people, what they've done is they tried to change the sound to follow that. So instead of Yahoo, they say Yeho, right? To try to change the sound because they said they and they feel it, and they they probably did it in honest intentions at the start. But in their feeling, they were saying that his name is too holy for people to actually pronounce it. So they said, let's just say it was pronounced this way. That way people don't say how it's truly pronounced. So they say, Yeho instead of uh, Yahoo. And then, as it gets transliterated, the Y it starts to make the, uh, they start to believe that the Y makes the J sound. So when it gets lost in the text, people say, Jeho instead of Yahoo. All right. So where it says, Jehovah, it's really Yahoo. Right, and when it says uh, 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 Jehoshua, it's really Yahushua. All right, so keep going. And Moses sent them to spy out the land of Canaan, uh -huh. and said unto them, Give you up this way southward, and go up into the mountain, and see the land, what it is, and the people that dwell therein, whether they be strong or weak, few or many. All right, so notice it's sending out the men, and he say. Guess who was among them? Jehoshua or Joshua is who it really is, right? So Joshua, the son of Nun, he said, I'll send him with you. Remember, Joshua got all this confidence. All this stuff being rehearsed to Joshua. Let's see what else happened. The heart. And what the land is, what the land is that they dwell in, whether it be good or bad, and what cities they be that dwell in, whether it's in tents or in strongholds. Uh-huh. And what the land is, whether it be fat or lean, whether there be wood therein or not, and be ye of good courage, and bring of the fruit of the land. Mm -hmm. Now the time was the time of the first ripe grapes. Mm -hmm. So they went up and searched the land from the wilderness of Zen unto Rehob, as men come to Hamath. And they ascended by the south and came unto Hebron, where Ahaman, Shishai, and Talmai, the children of Anak, were. Now Hebron was built seven years before Zoan in Egypt. And they came upon and they came unto the brook of Eshcol and cut down from there a branch with one cluster of grapes, and they bare it between two upon a staff, and they brought the pomegranates and of the figs. Mm -hmm. And the place was called the brook of Eshcol because of the cluster of grapes which the children of Israel cut down from there. Mm -hmm. And they returned from searching of the land for after forty days. And they went and came to Moses and to Aaron, and to all the congregation of the children of Israel, unto the wilderness of Paran, to Kadesh, mm -hmm. and brought back word unto them, and unto all the congregation, and showed them the fruit of the land. And they told them, and said, We came unto the land whether thou sent us, and surely it flows with milk and honey. Mm -hmm. And this is the fruit of it. Now, all right, so they came back, and they were like, man, we looked through the land. And let me tell you, when 
Most High God said we were coming to a land of milk and honey. He wasn't lying, right? Then he brought back some souvenir. They like, see, this thing flowing with milk and honey. This thing good. We in for some good stuff. But watch this. And nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land, and the cities are walled and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak there. Mm -hmm. The Amalekites dwell in the land of the south, and the Hittites, and the Jebusites, and the Amorites dwell in the mountains, and the Canaanites dwell by the sea, mm -hmm. and by the coast of Jordan. And Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once and possess it, right? for we are well able to overcome it. Look, so all the, all the men, they came, they was like, listen, that thing real nice, but uh, there's some real big brothers over there. I mean, they tall. We look like grasshoppers. Them compared to us, we like grasshoppers. We like little bugs compared to them. They huge, right? Because they were dealing with giants, right? They're dealing with these people that were giant, literal giant, descending to the, you know what I'm saying? We'll talk about it probably probably next week. But, you know what I'm saying? They were descending to the, uh, descending to the, uh, of the offspring of the angels that came down in Genesis 6, right? And started sleeping with the women. So they made giants after that, right? So these were descendants of the old guys. And they was looking like, these guys are huge. You know what I'm saying? Nine, ten feet guys. You know what I'm saying? They big. They like, listen. <laughs> it's nice over there. I mean, flowing with milk and God wasn't lying about that. Uh, but uh, we might want to relax because these guys are huge. So then Caleb came. Caleb from Judah. Caleb popped out. He was like, what? We can go up and take it right now. Right? Caleb from Judah. He was ready to get it. He was like, man, listen. God gave it to us. We can go up and take it right now. The rest of them, they kind of scaring the people. Like, nah, that thing, I mean, listen, nice land and all. We might want to relax, though. You know what I'm saying? Caleb, like, let's get that thing right now. Let's hear it. But the man that went up with him said, we be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. He said, we, we can't go up against these people. They're stronger than us. Let's hear it. And they brought up an evil report of the land which they had searched unto the children of Israel, saying, The land through which we have gone to search it is a land that eats up the inhabitants thereof. Mm -hmm. And all the people that we saw in it are the men of great stature. Mm -hmm. And there we saw the giants, the, son of, the sons of Anak, which came of the giants. Mm -hmm. And we are in our own sight as grasshoppers, and so we were in their sight. Mm -hmm. And the congregation lifted up their voice and cried, and the people wept that night. And all the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron, and, against, and the whole congregation said unto them, Would God that we had died in the land of Egypt, or right? would God we had died in this wilderness. So this is, this is the reaction that they caused in the people. They scared everybody. They were like, man, we came up here for nothing. He like, man, it's better off that we died in Egypt, or we died in this wilderness, than to get all the way here. We think we're going to get to the land, and then we got to go up against angels that we, I mean, uh, giants that we know we can't be. Right? So they broke the heart of the people. Right? Grab, uh, grab uh, Deuteronomy chapter 1 for me. It's Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse, uh, verse 9. Uh, excuse me. It's Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 9. And I spake unto you at that time, saying, I am not able to bear you myself alone. Uh, that's verse 9? Yep. Uh, give me 19. Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 19. And when we departed from Horeb, we went through all that great and terrible wilderness, which ye saw... Yeah, which he saw by the way of the mountain of the Amorites, as mm -hmm. the Lord our God commanded us. And we came to Kadesh Barnea. And I said unto you, Ye are come unto the mountain of the Amorites, which the Lord our God doth, both, doth give unto us. Behold, the Lord thy God hath set the land before thee. Go up and possess it, as the Lord God of thy fathers hath said unto thee. Fear not, neither be discouraged. Mm -hmm. And ye came near unto me, every one of you, and said, We will send men before us, and they shall search out the land and bring us word again. By what way we must go up, uh -huh. and into what cities we shall come. Uh -huh. And the saying pleased me well, and I took twelve men of you, one of a tribe. Mm -hmm. And they turned and went up into the mountain, and came to the valley of Eshcol, and searched it out. Mm -hmm. 
And they took of the fruit of the land uh, in their hands and brought it down unto us and brought us word again mm -hmm. and said, It is a good land which the Lord our God does give us. Mm -hmm. Notwithstanding, you would not go up, but rebelled against the commandment of the Lord your God. All right, so he is like, even though y'all saw it was a good land, y'all got scared to go up and y'all rebelled against God. All right, let's see. And you murmured in your tent and said, Because the Lord hated us, he has brought us forth out of the land of Egypt mm -hmm. to deliver us into the hand of the Amorites to destroy us. Mm -hmm. Whether shall we go up? Right? Ain't that, ain't that how we feel sometimes? We face a little bit of adversity and we start making it about us, huh? God hated us. We face a little bit, I mean, stuff get a little uncomfortable. I was like, God, he hated us. Right? He put me through this because he hated us. Right? Keep going. Whole time, we got to see the most high God in this stuff. We got to see his son in this stuff. There ain't, ain't nothing in this stuff about us. Why shall we go up? Mm -hmm. Our brethren have discouraged our hearts, saying, The people is greater and taller than we. Mm -hmm. The cities are great and walled up to heaven, and moreover, we have seen the sons of the Anakims there. Mm -hmm. Then I said unto you, Dread not, neither be afraid of them. The Lord your God, which goes before you, he shall fight for you, according to all that he did for you in the Egypt before your eyes. Uh -huh. And in the wilderness, where thou hast seen how the Lord thy God bear thee, as man does bear his son in all the way that ye went until ye came into this place. Now remember, we saw this stuff with our own eyes. This is why the Most High God let us see it first. Because he's trying to get us to a place where it's like, although the obstacle was high, I got it. Right? He, tried to, he showed us all this stuff first. And yet we still, because people came and talked to us, we didn't take God's word over there. We let it make, we, we, we let it make us uncomfortable. When I say God's word, I'm very clear. I'm talking about the book. I ain't talking about somebody come to you and be like, oh, God has a word for you today. God said that God told me, God put it on my heart to tell you that. I'm not talking about that. If what they say line up with the book, God bless them. But I'm talking about the book. I want to be very clear. Book tell us what we can do. Don't let anybody tell you that you can't do it. Book tell you you can't, you can go the rest of your life without sin. Don't let anybody come over here and tell you. You can't do a book tell you you can pray for something and it happen. Don't nobody tell you that that thing ain't gonna happen. That's crazy. Not like the book said. And the book say it. The book said it. And you telling me it can't happen. Okay, I know I ain't got no business talking to you. Then. All right, why am I even entertaining this conversation? That don't even make sense. I, I mean, I'm just killing a whole bunch of time even talking to you. That's why people. I, 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 you can't entertain a lot of these conversations that these people have. It's not even sound conversations. A lot of stuff that you got, I don't even get involved with this stuff no more. It just don't even make sense. It's not sound logic. I go based off of the book. And you don't rock with this? Okay, for sure. Well, at least I know. You know what I'm saying? At least I know I'm not going to spend too much time going back and forth with you. Right? No. We got a whole plan here that we can just stick to. As long as we stick to it. We might get a little uncomfortable. That's cool. Be consistent. Things might be great. That's cool. Be consistent. Right? No matter what, just stick to the plan. That thing will work out for us. Keep going. Watch this. Yet in this thing, you did not believe the Lord your God. He said, in this thing, guess what? You didn't believe him. Who went in the way before you to search you out a place to pitch your tents in. Uh-huh. And fire by night to show you by what we shall, what way you should go. Uh-huh. And in a cloud by day. Mm -hmm. And the Lord heard the voice of your words and was wroth and swear, saying, surely... There shall not one of these men of this evil generation see that good land, mm -hmm. which I swear to give unto your fathers. Uh-huh. Except Caleb, the son of Jephunneh. Remember Caleb? Caleb was the one who was like, man, what y'all talking about? We can take it right now. He's the only one. But who else? He shall see it, and to him will I give the land that he has trodden upon to his children, because he has wholly followed the Lord. Uh-huh. Caleb and Joshua. Also, yeah. the Lord was angry with me for your sake, saying... Oh, you didn't say Joshua right there? Uh, yes, it is. Oh, okay, go ahead. For your sake, saying, Thou shalt not go in there. But Joshua, the son of Nun, which stands before thee, he shall go in go in there, encourage him, for he shall cause Israel to inherit it. Right? Why do you think Joshua went? Because he had that confidence. He saw that stuff. Remember, Joshua went up in there. That stuff didn't bother Joshua. Joshua was looking like, oh, now that ain't nothing. We can tell Moses to put his hands up and we'll win. Because remember, that's been drilled into Joshua's brain. That's why when the most high God tell us to put this stuff in our kids and teach it to them when we rise up and when we go to bed and when we walking in the way, because if we drill this stuff into our kids, I don't care what these people say, indoctrinating our kids, you better believe I'm darn indoctrinating. What else am I indoctrinating them with? Darn, real, uh, what is it, the real world? 
That aren't bad girls club. What's I don't know. What's the show now? Housewives. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm just going back to the one that I used to watch. You know what I'm saying? What else we got? Jersey Shore. You know what I'm saying? What is it? What people watch nowadays? Like, why you trying to act like what people don't know? What do people watch? What do people watch? This is a basketball wives. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We indoctrinate them with all this other stuff. What show is that watching? It, it popped up with Christmas and all that stuff. What show is he watching? My boy, tell tell quick. As soon as that thing come on, we don't celebrate that. You know what I'm saying? Any, any one of those shows, you know, at a certain time of year, they start playing the Christmas break. No, we don't celebrate that. We celebrate my birthday in Purim. That's what he said. I was like, you darn right. Right? Because we drill it into his head. Next, we working on Passover. Right? Because if we do that, then they'll look at it and they'll be like, you know what? They can understand the world. All this stuff that get fed into them and they go to school and all this stuff. Yeah, well, you know, all, all of us used to be monkeys. You got a little monkey, take a few steps and it turn into like a, a hunched over monkey. A couple more steps and it's like just a black man. You know what I'm saying? That's, a, that's how they get you. You know what I'm saying? Because you look at it, that one that's like right before it becomes that pristine white man in the suit. You know what I'm saying? It's really, if you look at it, it's just a hairy black man. That's what they want you to feel like. They want you to feel you primitive. You know what I'm saying? Yo, people, why is Africa like that? Oh, that's just because they more primitive. See, the white man is more evolved. Right? They want that stuff to be in your subconscious. They ain't going to tell you that's where it came from. They ain't going to tell you about the, the scientific reasoning because of, because of a man named Darwin and his theory. And his theory was that certain races of people, um, especially the Germans, right, the same stuff that drove Hitler to do the stuff that they say he did, it came from his theories. Saying Hitler people was the greatest people. These other people are less evolved, especially the blacks. They ain't going to tell you all that history, but they keep it in the book. As much as they hate Hitler, they keep the theory that drove Hitler the way he went. So they say, at least. So they say. Right? They hold. They make fools out of us. They hold we indoctrinate them with that stuff, though. Their whole existence was copied from dark skin culture. Their whole existence. Constantly. From Still the, to this day. From the Greeks and before that. Right? Still to this day. But they have played because they make fools out of us. Right? You darn right I indoctrinate my kids with this book. They call us stupid. You believe that book, that book was in this, that, and that. Been they call us stupid. Okay, you real smart believing that you came from a monkey. You know what I'm saying? I can see. I can go to the park right now. I mean, go to the, go to the zoo right now and see monkeys. Why well, I can't see none of the black people that's in between? I can't see the hunched over monkey. I can't go nowhere and see that. I can't see the slightly less hunched over monkey. I can't see the hairy black man. Right? I can see the man in the suit, though. I can see y'all white folks. And I can see the original monkey. I can't see none of this stuff in between. Let them tell it. This took billions of years of evolution. Over a billion. None of them made it. But the first one made it. And the last one made it. But nobody in between made it. Yeah, that make a whole lot of sense. You darn right I'm going to indoctrinate because I'm going to teach my son how to think. That's crazy. Sit here and let these people just tell us whatever and then we grow up and we can't put pieces together because we got so many lies in our head. You start telling people the truth nowadays and it, they literally are confused. They don't even know what you're saying. Why? Because they're trying to make these lies fit. Like, okay, oh, okay, but no, I know, but I don't get it. Of course you don't. Of course you don't. You're not supposed to get it. Right? You're not supposed to get it. What we got? What we working with? Give me a uh, Psalm 14. You're not supposed to darn get it. I'll tell you. I'm about to tell you why you're not supposed to get it. It's Psalm chapter 14, verse 1. This is Psalm 14, verse 1. Let me show you why they don't get it. People are crazy. That's why these people want to shoot up these schools and all this stuff. They playing around with these people having these weird conversations. The conversation ain't about nothing. I think we need to take away all the guns. Other side talking about, I think we need to put more guns. Get a teacher's gun. <laughs> Get some student gun. Both of y'all are stupid. You know, back, you know back in the 50s, back in the 60s, back in even before that, the 40s and all that. 
Kids used to bring their guns to school, these white kids. We ain't talking about no black kids. This ain't, first of all, before I even get started, none of this got anything to do with black people. You know what I'm saying? I ain't even got no business talking about that because this ain't got nothing to do with us. I'm just talking about these white folks' stuff. I'm just trying to help them out a little bit. These white folks used to bring their stuff to the school. These kids, all of them, used to have guns at the school. You can pull up articles, old articles, and read about it. Right? Find me an old article from the 50s, 60s, 40s, anywhere in there. Find me some old article where one of these white kids shot up a school. You can find articles about them bringing schools, kids, uh, guns to school. And when they wasn't supposed to, right? They snuck guns to school, used to show them out, because they all, you know, they had gun training back then. You know what I'm saying? Show me one where they shot up the school. You're not going to find it. So don't try to act like by taking away all the guns. I, I, I read an article, posted an article on Facebook. It says, like, almost 200,000 guns have been stolen from the police. 200,000 guns the police reported as stolen. So you tell me, after we take away all the guns from civilians, right? What's going to happen when the police guns get stolen? Who's stealing them? Now you're about to have a whole bunch of criminals out here still with guns. It ain't civilians that's committing the crimes. It's criminals. So if the criminals still gonna get access to the guns and sell them to other criminals that have guns from the police, I guess we gotta take away theirs too. I bet you ain't not gonna do it. This stuff is futile. It don't even make sense what they talking about. Right? But it's crazy. They had this stuff in their head. It's foolish. They argue more guns, less guns. None of them talking about what the real issue is. None of them talking about that all these little kids, all these little white kids that shoot at these schools. None of them talking about they all got mental health issues. None of them talking about that they, that they all got, they all on medication. It's cool to have a mental health issue. You know what I'm saying? Well, you know, it happens, right? People, you know what I'm saying? Most of our God creators all different. You know what I'm saying? Some, some of the stuff they decide to label as mental health issues. Fine, we'll go with that. It's a mental health issue. Why are you putting these kids on this medication? You see the medication all on TV, right? They tell you, take this. They make a beautiful commercial. Got a little white kid running through the park. You know what I'm saying? They make a beautiful darn commercial. Then you get that fast-talking man at the end of it. <laughs> Please don't take it with any soda. If you take it with this, that's no, 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 no. You know what I'm saying? Could cause suicidal thoughts. This, that's another. Do not yeah. take it with friends at night. You know what I'm saying? All this type of different things. It's like, what in the world? <laughs> How the commercial go so dark? And he don't talk fast enough because as soon as you hear suicide, you're like, what in the world? So let me ask. If, I seen a couple of them that said suicide on top. <laughs> almost, listen, all the ones that got to do, this is the crazy part. All the ones that got to do with like depression and all that, guess, is, guess, guess what's going to happen there? Suicidal thoughts as a side, potential side effect. So let's just think about it. If something makes me feel like I want to kill myself, is it possible to make me feel like I want to kill somebody else? Is it possible that some of these kids that shooting up stuff is really trying to die themselves? But all they guess what they don't what, you know what they want to talk about? The Democrats, you know what they want you to think it's about? Whoever heard of the NRA? It's the National Rifle Association, right? It's a big old conglomerate, a, a, a group that, that advocates for people having guns. They want everybody to have guns, right? And so they donate to politicians, mostly Republicans. They donate to these Republicans. And so Trump, he's like, he told the NRA early, early on in his run, I will never turn on you guys with guns. They give them, you know, give them a little bit of money. You know what I'm saying? I will never turn on you guys with guns. So he stick with it. He's like, you know what I'm saying? No. You know what I'm saying? People have guns. I'm not going. I'm not going to take guns away from people. You know what I'm saying? So you know the Democrats. What they say is the NRA is ruining the country because they paying these politicians and they get need politicians to keep guns, which is causing deaths at our schools. Now, if my kid just got shot up at a school, that's an that's an argument that I'm gonna rock with. I'm gonna be like, you know what? That's crazy. Republicans are evil, right? Because it's emotional, right? It's something that grabs onto your emotion. Nobody really gives you all the details. But then, nobody's talking about the medication, right? So, if you notice 
how many gun commercials have you seen on these news stations? Right? When you're watching TV, how many gun commercials? How many commercials you've seen? You can buy this Glock 45. This, that, another. You can never see that, right? How many medication commercials have you seen when you watch the TV? No, time. Watch the news, right? Like when you watch the news, all the commercials is medication. Just see how many. Just, just think about it. Next time you end up watching the news channel, just see how many. So when you think about what's paying for this program that you're watching, it's medication companies. Now, once you take that into consideration, you got to look up how much money did the NRA, the National Rifle Association, give to politicians, let's say, last year. I looked it up. Ten million dollars. That's a ton of money, right? Then you look up the same thing for the pharmaceutical companies. How much money y'all think? I mean, if it, I mean, if it's ten million for the NRA, how much money do you think the, the pharmaceutical company gave? No thanks. Like a hundred million, three billion dollars. Three billion dollars. And these people got the nerve to say the NRA is ruining the country. Nobody talking about the medication. I wonder why. I wonder why. Right? This whole thing is a scam. None of these people is willing to have willing to have a real argument. But they get us riled up, get us emotional, get us to fight each other. And when I say us, I ain't talking about us. Because again, this ain't got nothing to do with us. Right? But us as Americans, people in America, it gets everybody riled up to pick this side of two sides that are completely illusions. Let's talk about what's really going on. Let's talk about how to really solve some problems. Let's talk about the heart of the people. These people have cold hearts. They're willing to see their brothers and sisters, people that look just like them, die. These white people walking in and killing a whole bunch of people that look just like them. Let's talk about that. It's no different with our people. We walk into our hoods, our neighborhoods, and we killing people that look just like our heart is evil against people that look just like us. Right? It's a reason for that because the heart of the people are cold. It's cold. Right? Just like the Most High God said. People would wax cold in heart. Watch with this. This is Psalm 14 verse 1. The fool has said in his heart that he said the who? God. The fool has the said. The wise God. person. The fool. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Now, I'll tell you why these people don't make no darn sense. Because in their heart, they're saying there is no God. Even some of these Christians. Notice it say in the heart. It don't say with their mouth. It don't say nothing. They said in their heart. So on the inside, they like it is no God. On the outside, they like praise God. I love Jesus. Right? On the outside, they like, oh, you know, I just really want kids to be good. I love the higher power. I love my chakras, my energies, and all this stuff that they be in. Good vibes. I'm getting, sending thoughts and good vibes in your direction. Right? <laughs> All the different stuff that they into. But at the end of it, in their heart, they say there is no God. And the book called them a fool. I had to go there because I called them stupid. Now I didn't want nobody to be like, oh, look at you. I'm like, well, I, you know, I got to prove that thing out now. Book called them a fool. The only reason I can call them stupid. They ain't no make no sense. All right? Grab uh, where 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 we leave off? Where we at? Uh, Deuteronomy thirty-eight and then Numbers Numbers fourteen two. Grab Roman nine. Then. I think we good there. Let's try to wrap this thing up. This is Romans chapter nine. Cause we did, man. The word the word that go out, man. That thing for everybody. White black, you know what I'm saying? Or the reefer, all that stuff, man. That thing that thing. That, most like God, he reach out, he call for everybody. You know what I'm saying? And we all got to look at this thing. Once we in this thing, man, we we all brothers and sisters. We all got to help each other out, man. I look at this stuff, man, I could not imagine, bro. Could not imagine. That thing almost had me broken up when I was, you know, I was like looking on the news. I'm like, I couldn't imagine getting a call saying my, my son's school got shot up, bro. And you got to like, like imagine, like just dry there and like, Wonder if your kid is God, bro. Oh man, that thing would kill me. That thing would kill me. That's a that's a terrible. When you 
You know what I'm saying? You feel for these people and they get they get co-opted and you know what I'm saying? They make these these arguments to them that don't make sense, but because it's emotional, it feel like it makes sense. And so they get these people to say all this stuff on TV. And it's like, man, who's going to help the people? Who's going to tell the people the truth? No, it's not. These white folks, the black folks, there's nobody out here telling people the truth. Nobody. Nobody just out here just laying it out like, man, stop going for all this stuff. Both of these stuff. Stop. Stop being a Democrat or a Republican. None of these people trying to help you. Serve the most high God. Turn from your wickedness. You white, you black, whoever you are, just turn from wickedness. The most high God can save you. You one of us after all that. We all the same. Do you think it ain't, gonna, it ain't no white, no black in heaven? In the kingdom? Most high God ain't looking down talking about some white and black. He looking for man whose soul is right. Even the book tells you, you ain't no Jew, no Gentile. Whose soul is right? Who was doing what the man says? That's something you, everybody talking about unification, trying to unify and all this stuff. Wakanda and all this stuff. Don't get me started. <laughs> you know, it's all this stuff that we look at. You want to unify, let's unify on something real. Right. I have a little problem with Wakanda. I have a little problem with that thing, too. <laughs> I just feel like it. I mean, it's my this is my thing. You know what I'm saying? It's my thing. At the end of the day, you know what I'm saying? The homie, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Black Panther was feeling like, you know, all right, you know what I'm saying? I'm a I'm a mess with the Americans. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna start sharing my technology. Cool. And then you open up a nonprofit where you paying to teach black people stuff. And then you sharing all your stuff with, with the UN and with Americans and everybody gets to share in your technology. And then you paying out of your pocket to teach black people stuff? I just feel like it should have went a little different. I feel like it should have been like, y'all want my technology? Alright. Give my people rep reparations. Y'all pay for it. That's good business. That's good. Bu okay, let me tell you. Which one of these businesses when they open up, they paying with their own money? They go get investors. They say, you know what? Listen, I got a good idea. And they have the money, though. Right? They have the money. And they go, look, I got a good idea. Why don't y'all buy into it? Why? You know what I'm saying? Why we got to be all, all nice on the movie team screen? Not even though it's weak. They, they was African. So I get it. You know what I'm saying? Whatever. You know what I'm saying? But we look at them. We say, you know what I'm saying? Like, why can't they be as savvy? You know what I'm saying? Like, all right. They don't want to put that thing on there, though. They ain't going to put that in the movie yet. Marvel has gone too far, you know what I'm saying, asking for reparations for black Americans. Yeah, no, nah, you know what I'm saying, let's, you know what I'm saying, y'all want the tech, y'all want some vibranium? You know what I'm saying, I got the vibranium right here, you want to be able to stick a little, you seen the movie yet? Oh, I don't want to ruin that thing, I ain't, I, I ain't going to ruin it, I ain't going to ruin that thing, but you going to, you want to go see it? Oh, okay, in that case, huh? The movie's Good. Like oh. You don't want to go see that thing? Oh, yeah, my You cheat. <laughs> well, I got five kids that are going to make this one unless you want to watch it. You know how I watch heard it. that. Go on, bring them on over there. <laughs> do it on my off day so my wife don't pull her hair out. I got you, man. Man, you look at these things, man. It's, it's, it's important for us to look at this stuff. And these images are good for us, but you know what I'm saying? We we got to be able to make sure we can sort through it and find out where the real solution is. Any. Gave us, a, gave us a little quick placebo, didn't they? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? That thing felt good, you know what I'm saying? You walk out that movie theater, your butt still black pole in America. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's, it's cool. It's like, yeah, yeah, show us something different. Because to be honest, those images do affect things, right? It affects mm -hmm. how, how people see see themselves, right? For so long, we see ourselves as nothing, you know what I'm saying? You could take a little black girl and have her choose between two dolls, and she's going to choose the white doll because everything she sees shows a white superiority. You know what I'm saying? So you start showing kids, black people in high positions. You start showing people Obama. Like, these images do matter. I'm not going to sit here and act like they don't. But at the same time, we got to get past even the images and make sure we get the substance. We can't let people just dangle images in front, in front of us and then lead us through images. Because as, as things, as, as, like, slavery used to be real, real obvious and, 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 and um, um, primitive. You know what I'm saying? But 
you know, until you see people in, in, in power adjusted as things went on to be more subtle. You know what I'm saying? Still get the same thing done or similar thing done. They just have to do it in a more subtle way. So you can imagine as time go on, they'll say, okay, well, let's have a black president. We can still get the same thing done. We just got to do it this way. Let's have black people shown in movies. We can still get the same thing done. We just got to adjust a few things. So we need to just make sure that we outthinking everything. And we have it in our brain to outthink it. It just these people feed us so much, so much, so much crap, you know what I'm saying? It's hard for us to kind of sort it all together. Let me tell you what this thing straightened out though. This book is Romans 9. Watch this. Verse 1. Romans chapter 9. Give me verse 15. Ain't gotta read it. I always try to get up out of here. For he says to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. Uh-huh. And I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. Mm-hmm. So then it is not for it is not of him that willeth or of him that runneth, but of God that shows mercy. And that's what it's all about. That's the only reason I went there. You know what I'm saying? That's what it's all about. You know what I'm saying? We got all this stuff in our heart, all this stuff that we do, all these people that are foolish, all these people that get in our way, all these challenges that come up against us, all the different stuff. And at the end of the day, it's all about who the most high God decided to give mercy to. And guess who he said that he would give mercy to? those who keep his commandments. He said, having mercy on all those who love and keep my commandments. Right? It's a path for us. Right? It's given to us. The opportunity is there. We just got to keep going. Right? We just have to keep going. A lot of times, you, you know what I'm saying, we feel, keep reading, watch this. Paul break it down for us right here. So then, it is not of him, oh, it is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but of God that shows mercy. For the scripture says unto Pharaoh, even for this same purpose have I raised thee up, that I might show my power in thee, and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. All right? Like, Egypt was a challenge for us. All right? That wasn't no small thing for us. We were sitting there and we were slaves in Egypt. That was a challenge. We thought that was impossible at the time. And then we come to find out, Most High God had that thing planned out the whole time. He said, oh, I'm going to raise you up just for this person, just so I can bring the people out. Right? Keep going. Watch this. I love this verse. Therefore hath he mercy on whom he will have mercy, and whom he will he hardened it. Right? Remember Moses, when, when Moses was, was talking to, to the Pharaoh? It kept on telling us in the book that his heart was hard. Because the Most High God was hardening his heart on purpose. He was like, yeah, no, I want you to take it to that last level so I can take your kid from you. I'm going to take your firstborn child from you. Then after I do that, your butt, then after that, then your butt going your, your butt gonna fold after that. And that's exactly what the what the Pharaoh did. He folded. Right? He said now he's like, alright, that's it. You touch my kid now. Let the people go. And he finally let us go. At any time the most high God could have made a hole in the ground and 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 we could have just walked out of there, took a, a tunnel or something like that. He split the darn sea when it was time to go. But he didn't want that. He wanted Pharaoh. To bow down to him and to let us go. Right? Pharaoh, you think you run stuff? I'm going to make you do something you don't want to do. You say they can go. I want it to be your decision. Right? That's the type of God we work with. He ain't playing around with nobody. He'll humiliate you. He'll humiliate any one of us too. Only way we can avoid that? Be on this side. Alright? Keep going. Watch this. Thou will say then unto me, why does he yet find fault? For who has resisted his will? Uh huh. Nay, but, O man, who are you that reply against God? Shall the thing formed say unto him that formed it, What, is you made, what hast thou made me thus? Why right. hast thou made me thus? That's the people's problem now. All right? The thing formed is everybody saying, Oh, why did you make me this way? All right? God made me this. People, I'm born gay. God made me this way. So it's okay. Let's just say he did make you that way. Does that mean it's not a sin? Okay, so if we were able to identify a disorder called necrophilia, right? If that was possible for us to identify a disorder named necrophilia, is that what I'm, that's the, what's, the, what's that one? You mean pedophilia? Pedophilia. What's, what's necro? What's the one you steal? I don't know. Kleptophobia? Oh, klept- kleptophobia. That's what I mean. Necrophilia, what is that? Sexual? I don't know. All right, so let's go with, let's go with a 
kleptomania. That's what I'm thinking about. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We were able to identify that you a kleptomania at birth. Is still not a, a sin for you? Is that not wrong? Is that not against the law? It is. So why is it any different with anything else? Why is it unfair if God say, if he did, if it be true, that God said, you are made that way with an inclination towards the same sex? Let's just say, I mean, let's let's just say, I don't believe it for a second, but let's just give it to him. If God said, you have a natural inclination towards the same sex, why is that so out of bounds? Oh, no, if God did that, that means it's okay. It ain't okay in any other situation. I have a natural inc inclination to opposite sex. I'm still a sinner if I ain't married. So why is it any different? Why is it, like, unfair if God say that? You sit your butt down and keep yourself. You don't like you don't like the opposite sex? Cool. Ain't nobody say you have to like them. You just keep yourself. Because you can't marry the same sex. That ain't in our book. Anything else, you going outside our book. All right? But God made me this way. I'm trying to put that stuff on God. That's why Paul's asking. He's like, man, the, the thing form going to say to the maker, you made me this way? You made me thus? Who else tried to do that? Who tried to do that? Who remembers? We read it not too long ago. Yeah, Adam. It Adam. Huh? Adam? Adam? He didn't tell God that he gave me this. Oh, yeah, he did. He said, yeah, he said, you gave me this one. I'm talking about Moses, though. Right? Grab uh, Exodus 4. He said, I can't speak. Yeah. All right, this is Exodus chapter 4, verse 10. We'll get up out of here. It's important though, man. We gotta we gotta understand this stuff. The most high God he'll put us in the position and because of our lack of knowledge, he said he said my people die for lack of information, for lack of knowledge. Ignorance is what that is. We die because we just don't know. A lot of people just dying because we just don't know. He give us an opportunity to know. What are we gonna do with this information now? All right? This is Exodus chapter 4. Give me verse 10. Watch this. And Moses said unto the Lord, O oh my Lord, I am not eloquent, neither here to fore, nor since thou hast spoken unto thy servant. But I am slow of speech and of slow of tongue. He said, man, I'm slow of speech and I'm slow of tongue. He said, I'm not eloquent. I don't speak well. Right? I'm slow of speech and I'm slow of tongue. Watch what the Most High God said. And the Lord said unto him, Who made man's mouth? Or who makes the dumb, or deaf, or the seeing, or the blind? Have not I the Lord? Now therefore go, and I will be with thy mouth to teach thee what thou should say. Boy, don't sit here and tell me what, what you are. Boy, I made you. Right? Sometimes we got to just think bigger than all that stuff. But you can never get that if you don't, you don't be, you're not honest with God. Right? If you're not just straightforward with God, look, God, I don't feel like I'll talk well. I honestly have had that conversation. I feel like I stutter. I feel like I mess up darn words, all this stuff. I honestly have had that conversation with God. Like, man, I, I pray. Y'all don't even know. I pray all the time. God, send us a prophet. Send us somebody else that can lead us. Send us somebody that can take us further. Send us somebody that can encourage us a little better. All these things. Because I always feel like it just, you know what I'm saying? I, just, I mean, this thing just ain't working. You know what I'm saying? I don't feel like I'm eloquent enough. I honestly have had these conversations. Then what are we going to do? Stop? God has to deal with you in those type of things. Well, I made you. Your word to go just as far. Then you know what I listen to? I hear these rappers that sound absolutely slow of speech. And uh, what is it? What is it? Slow of speech and slow of tongue. And they the best selling rappers. <laughs> or he was an NBA player interviews. You know what I'm saying? You said the, the NBA player. Oh, yeah, nah, nah, you just want to play good. And, uh, he be making a whole lot of darn money. People must like it. Right? People kind of like when, you know what I'm saying, the word don't come out as pristine and clear. You know the most popular style of rap right now? The mumble rap. Hmm. Right? I ain't got no excuses out here. Teach these people the truth and mumble while doing it. However you get across, just teach the people the truth. Most of our guys say, yeah, send somebody when it's time to send somebody. 
You just stand in the gap until that point. Right? It's important that we look at this stuff. Most ain't got no, you talk to God, my God to check your butt. Relax. You all right. You right where you're supposed to be. I'll be with your mouth. Go ahead. I'm going to be with you. Whatever, whatever your infirmity is, whatever makes it harder for you, I'm going to be with you. You just do what I need you to do. I just told you what you need to do. You read this book, you know what you need to do. You just keep moving. Grab a... We're going to get out of here, I promise. Grab a, a John 9. This is John chapter 9. A lot of times we misunderstand this whole shebang. You know, we talk about it a lot out here. Let's read it first. Let's talk. It's John chapter 9, verse 1. And Yahshua passed by. He saw a man which was blind from his birth. He saw a man that which was what? Blind from his birth. So this man was born blind. Right? Watch the question that the disciples asked. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master. Who he said, Master. He was blind from the birth. So this, this is what the disciples thought when we see him. And tell me this ain't us. This is me specifically. Because I didn't preach to him. Right? Watch this. Who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Right? He was born blind. So they asked the question, did the boy sin? Because, I mean, how did he see he was born that way? Right? So was it because of his sin or was it because of his parents' sin that caused him to be born blind? We teach that. Right? We teach that. We teach the son, the sins of the, of the father will, will go down to the third and fourth generation. The, he will visit the iniquity. The iniquity, yeah. The yeah. sins of the father, he'll visit the iniquity to the third and fourth generation. Right? And so we teach that. Right? We, we've taught how uh, David, you know what I'm saying? He commits a sin and his son dies because of it after about seven days of life. Right? We teach this. But watch how Yahushua answered this question. It's a beautiful question. And Yahushua answered, Neither has his, his, this man sinned, nor his parents. But he said, they... neither has this man sinned, nor his parents. In other words, the result of him being blind, born blind, wasn't a result of his sin, nor a result of his parents' sin. And he had nothing to do with neither one of them. Why it happened, Yahushua? But that the works of God should be made manifest in him. He said, so what I'm about to do right now could happen. Only reason is like that, so people can see a miracle. Watch this. I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night comes when no man can work. Uh-huh. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle. Mm -hmm. And he anointed the eyes of the blind man with the clay. Mm -hmm. And said unto him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which is by the interpretation sent. He went his way, therefore, and washed and came seeing. The neighbors, therefore, and they which before had seen him that he was blind said is not this he that sat and begged all right so they looked at him and they saw he was he was he could see now right a lot of times we 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 have a lot of options about things that could happen or should happen or would have happened or might have happened this way and this may be the reason and all that all that stuff we can get caught up in because we can attribute one of the reasons and not be doing it properly. We don't really know. Right? That's why we keep all the options floating. But guess what? We don't change what we do. We keep obeying. We keep looking for the God's glory. And we talk to God. The only reason they was able to get that. Because they was able to communicate directly with Yahushua. And guess what? He told them. Oh, this is the reason. Then they see a miracle right after. We pray to God. We don't know why. Right? We don't know why all these things happen and we don't know why the challenges come that we have but we pray to the Most High God. Go back and forth with Him. Right? And we hope God willing, He'll show us why. We might like it. We might hate that thing. Whatever it is, if you hate it, tell Him. God, I hate that thing. If you love it, tell Him. God, I love this thing. I appreciate you for it. Right? But no matter what, just make sure we keep that open communication with the Most High God. And we telling them how we feel. And speaking to them how we feel. Not trying to pray past his thoughts. Well I know God already going to do this. So I'm not even going to pray for that. I'm just going to pray. That's crazy. That thing don't make no sense. Most High God going to shoot all through that prayer. That prayer ain't even. I don't, even feel, I don't believe that prayer going to get anywhere. Going to slap that junk down. How you going to try to pray. Anticipating what I'm going to do. I mean it's saying your word. Then tell him what it's saying in his word. He appreciate that. 
you said in your word you're going to do this, but God, can you find another way to do it? That's going to be uncomfortable for me. I pray for our people all the time. I know, it, I know our, our people darn doomed. I ain't going to start playing, praying for them. Right? Pray for these sinners too. Right? I know I know the most high God ain't, you know, ain't going to do nothing to these people turn. Guess what I'm going to pray for? That they turn. Pray for all types of people. I'll be praying for the president. Pray for Obama too. You know what I'm saying? I pray for all these people. All right, what I'm going to do? The book tells us you pray for the leaders so that your time will be safe. It'll be comfortable for you. What I'm going to do if Trump just wake up one day, all right, I had enough of you black folks. I ain't did nothing to y'all, but y'all let these Democrats trick y'all into talking about me. We good. Food stamps away. Now you want to send boxes to people. Y'all ready about that? He want to just send boxes to people. He don't want to take away the food stamp. You think that would be his heart if, if, if in his mind, he like, I ain't did nothing to any black folks. Why they hate me into calling me racist? I can understand the Mexicans calling me racist, right? I ain't did nothing to black folks. Why they calling me racist? You can understand that being in his mind. Oh, yeah, I'll be praying. I'll be like, oh, man, don't make it harder for my people. It's been hard enough for us. I ain't poking. I ain't poking these people. Leave these people alone. Pray for these people. That they take it easy. Most of I got to have mercy. I ain't feeling like I don't need nothing from the white man. I mean, that stuff crazy. I need a whole lot from the white man. The most I got put you here under their control, under their under they authority. How you gonna say you don't need it? The most I got put you here. I don't go along with these, these, you know what I'm saying? These, these, I don't know what you call these people. These black folks that just crazy. They got crazy, illogical thoughts. Take your butt somewhere else now. <laughs> just so you can run into the same thing. You know what I'm saying? Go to Africa so you can have an African man ruling over. Doing the same darn thing to you think this thing black and white ain't got nothing to do with black and white. This thing is authority. This thing is God. This God. This God saying, "Oh, y'all didn't listen to me. I'm gonna give you somebody worse to listen to." You don't want to do what I say. I'm gonna make you do what they say. This stuff is a teaching. This is what he's doing. To us. All this is a lesson. He gotta prove something. He gotta keep a promise. And we gotta keep it through these challenges. We gotta keep that thing consistent. It's the Most High God, and we appreciate Him for it. In the end, and he got something special for it. You know what I'm saying? We just gotta make it there. And when he starts showing us stuff and he sends us to see stuff before, we can't get scared. You know what I'm saying? We can't get scared. We can't look at it and be like, man, that thing is a giant problem there. You know what I'm saying? When it's time to go into the kingdom, we can't say, ooh, I ain't trying to move now. We gotta be like Caleb and Joshua. Like, man, we already got this thing. Cause somebody tell y'all sure to hold his hands up, we good. That got that. We in there. Fearless. Can none of these people say or do anything to us outside of what God wants them to do. So the only thing we got to do is behave in a way where we know God wants them to be good to us. That way, however it end up, we know that was the plan. This thing going to work out for our good, though. Has to if we love the man. Has to if we keep his commandments. Any questions? Let's pray out.